Hello everyone, this is Rick Morgan. I wanted to share with you an experiment I conducted recently in which I wanted to better understand the proper concentration of hydrogen peroxide to use on a book when combining it with light to do some whitening. I found a book with some foxing on, on the back cover, a nice uh, little area that was covered with foxing, and I decided to concoct some solutions of peroxide. They were 30%, 12 9%, 6%, 3%, 2%, and a control with 0%. And I exposed them to light at the same interval, and I measured it. So I had to do it a few times because the first experiment, uh, you'll get to see the experiments and the results soon, um, They the drops spread and sort of mixed, and I lost the, uh, they, were, they weren't sort of discrete and uh, mutually exclusive areas all of a sudden. So it was kind of a not great experiment in so I did lit, the second experiment was a, with a thin film where I took just the, I only had a f few spots left. So I took a couple of popular concentrations of peroxide and just simulated, you know, aerosol with a, a spray of peroxide. And I, I just took a Kim wipe little paper towel thing. I just made a very thin uniform layer so that they wouldn't spread over a great distance. And that was, that was a little more revealing, I think. So uh, hang on and check out the results from this experiment here, and I'll, I'll see you around. Take care. Bye-bye. This is the book we work, we're working with, Justice League Annual Number 2 from 1984. This is what the back looks like. It's, it's pretty miserable. The first thing I did was concoct these solutions, 30%, 12, 9, 6, 3, 1, and 0% hydrogen peroxide. This is, this is the initial image of Justice League Annual Number 2 from 1984. This is what it looked like when I started. Lots of foxing here. Very clearly foxing too. So what we did here was we just put exactly one drop of the test solution on these little stains that we identified here. And it wasn't really that great of a test because we found out it was pretty hydrophobic and it took a while for it to absorb in the paper. We didn't know how wide the stain was going to get so we just kept doing that and we put you know more drops on each stain and it ends up it was a little too much because they they spread out quite a bit over time which we didn't expect and then the solutions i think they mixed a little bit so it wasn't really that pure of a test but the results are the results they are what they are no matter what so this is just us my partner here and I, thank you, Josh. Shout out to you for helping with this test. Here's what they look like when we started so you can remember for later. Then we turned on the 435 nanometer lights and checked back every 30 minutes. Well, and we didn't have to wait long because after just half an hour, it looked like this. And if you look at the stains from, let's say, start at the right with the 0%, I know that's a terrible looking 0%, but the far, far right one is, there's not much there. There isn't really any much of a stain to, to speak of. Even the space between, a little bit of a space between the drops, there's not much there. Maybe 1 and 3% have a tiny bit of dirt left over. But it's, it's subtle. It's hard to say that they're dirty. The rest of it looks pretty good. If anything at all, I'd say maybe the 9, 12, and 30 have less tide lines at the edges, perhaps, but it's pretty much the same. And here's a comparison of the original image, what it looked like before. So you can look at what we have here. It looks, maybe it isn't foxing. It looks like foxing to me, but it sure did clean it up quickly. And there really wasn't a significant difference in concentrations of peroxide and even the water. I mean, just plain water, 0% on the far right was was doing something here. So I decided to redo this experiment with thin films. I took just the 6% and 3%, some of the more common concentrations, and wiped them on a couple stains in the book. And I think that might be a little more revealing because honestly, there's not a lot of information here. So it it is, uh, it's, it, everything seemed to work. So it doesn't seem to, this would indicate you don't even need peroxide at all, even on this particular book, but we will find out a little bit more. So as you can imagine, I'm a little stumped thinking, why do these look pretty much the same? And I'm, I'm starting to realize the drops had sort of spread and, and run together. And some of the, the 
solution was just this mixing from drop to drop. So maybe it wasn't the greatest test. I should at least see I've seen a gradient from left to right. So I said, let's do something more like what we would see if we're like spraying a mist on a book and not just dropping a drop on it. And my effort, my naive effort to control the volume, thinking that would be the big differentiator. So what I did instead was I made a thin film. I just wiped a small amount of 6% and 3% and some of the few remaining foxing stains I had left. And you can take a look here and see what that looks like. You can see how they look here. They're both pretty, pretty gross looking as I start this, uh, this experiment. And I thought to myself, this time I'm going to just keep adding small amounts of material in a thin film and exposing it until it stops really making a difference, uh, at least on one, one part or the other, until there's a really obvious difference that I can see. And I was rewarded. So here's the, it's 60 minutes. This is that the first thin film had dried. I, I did a photo here. You can see a difference forming, definitely a difference between six and 3%. I would say the six is working much better in this particular case. Just after the first application, you can see that pretty clearly, I think. This is the second application at 90 minutes. Remember, this is very, it's barely wet. There's hardly any peroxide in here. It doesn't look much different, but I'd say it looks a little, a little better than after the first application. And as we go forward, we'll see that we have, this is the third application. Now, again, this is 120 minutes application number three. I think the right stain, the 3% stain is starting to look cleaner. It's definitely getting there. It's getting to where the 6% was a while ago, and that's not much of a surprise. Then this is application number four at 150 minutes here. And you definitely, I think both look pretty good. I would say the 6% looks better, and, but the 3% is there too. I think they're both, they're both cleaner, honestly. Here's a comparison of the initial and the final, the 6% and 3%. Both look better. Absolutely, there's no doubt about it. Honestly, I think the stain on the right of both of them might actually be diminished. Maybe it's just my eyes look tricking me, but uh, I think they look, they look, they both look better. If anything, the six percent's possibly a little bit, a little bit improved over over the three percent. But both both are pretty good, honestly. I did one last bonus test for myself to separate the type of staining on this book. So I went to the the bottom corner of the same book where there are some mysterious spots. Added a very thin film and just got it wet and then literally wiped off uh, 6, 3, uh, 1, and 0% peroxide solutions and exposed them to just 30 minutes of light. So really no big, no big difference here, honestly, in this particular type of stain. Certainly much different than we saw on the other staining earlier. So what did we learn today? Did we learn anything at all? I think I think maybe we did. I think that in the initial test, it looks like if you use a lot of material, even if it's just water on certain stains, and I'm not convinced that these stains wouldn't have just come off if I just rinsed this book with water or peroxide. They, they may have, hence the tide lines. The tide lines give it away that probably I didn't even need peroxide. But it looks like if you use a lot of it and you soak it pretty good, that a wide range of... of Material will work, and that makes sense. If you're using a ton of it, maybe you know their quality has a quantity, a quality on its own, right? If you have a thin film, if you're not going to apply much, it appears that the concentration does make a difference from our second test. That you really, um, and that on those particular stains, the three percent did look quite a bit better than the sorry, the six percent did look quite a bit better than the three percent in you know that exposure. But it took longer, and it took more applications. It, but it, it looked better. It did it did do a better trick if you don't want to soak the book. I think those looked better. The, the tide lines looked awful. It, it, you know, that, it's not attractive. So the, the thin layers, multiple applications, slightly higher concentration of peroxide of the 6% did seem improved. The last test, but nothing really happened. I don't think those, those particular stains were not going to come up with peroxide in any case. So that may have been a lost cause. And the book... If it had any more stains left on it, I would try to take them off with a MacuClean clean because I think that they might, maybe I'll try to attack those tide lines with it. I think they would come up pretty easily and that the peroxide and the light was not needed in this case. And I think next test, if uh, 
if I, if I decided to do another test, I would do the same thing with not with foxing, but maybe with a yellowed book, an older book. I'll do the same thing with uh, something that's tanned all over and then see if, how that how that makes a difference. And I think I think that might make a bigger difference. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, take care. See you later. Bye-bye.